Why do these tiny microorganisms move with such grace and precision while humans splash around chaotically in the same substance? Water is water, right? Well, not exactly. While water to us is something we easily move through, to microorganisms, it's as thick as honey. Today, we're going to explore how microorganisms have mastered their honey-like world and not only survive, but thrive. This isn't an accident. It's the science of fluid dynamics. Let's dive in. There's a clear difference in how water reacts to movement at a microscopic scale. This rotifer is creating a vortex by beating its cilia in a coordinated pattern. The vortex allows rotifers to capture food particles that are quite a distance away, as the size of the vortex can be 5 to 10 times the size of the rotifer. Compare that to this swimmer, whose arms are creating a vortex only 1.5 times their length. This simple comparison highlights the difference between the microscopic water world and the human water world. But you're thinking, why would water behave so differently at a microscopic scale? To understand this, we have to take a shallow dive into the world of fluid dynamics, specifically the Reynolds number. The Reynolds number is a concept that helps us understand how objects move through fluids like water. It's a ratio that compares two opposing forces, inertia, the tendency to keep moving, and viscosity, fluid resistance or stickiness. The formula looks like this. It's the size component in the numerator that creates such drastically different environments at different scales, even though it's the same water with the same viscosity. For microscopic organisms, their tiny size is the dominant factor, making the Reynolds number very small. For humans, our much larger size increases the Reynolds number dramatically. But what do these numbers really mean? Let's visualize these two different worlds. In the microorganism's low Reynolds number environment, where viscosity dominates, water behaves like honey. Organisms come to an immediate standstill when they stop paddling. Patterns in the water are smooth, regular, and predictable. Watch as we visualize the true reach and structure of this bryozoan's vortex by adding motion trails. When the bryozoan stops moving its cilia, the vortex immediately stops too. This is why microorganisms and microanimals with cilia create such impressive organized vortices. They've evolved specialized movements that exploit this viscous, predictable environment. But in our high Reynolds number environment, where inertia dominates, water behaves very differently. Here, momentum matters. Swimmers glide after taking a stroke. Water moves in chaotic, turbulent patterns, irregular, swirling eddies that are hard to control. And when we stop moving, the water continues to swirl. Just look at these water polo players. Despite being elite athletes, they struggle with quick direction changes and create chaotic splashes. And now that we understand the physics at play, let's explore how evolution has shaped microscopic life to thrive in their honey-like world. In a low Reynolds number environment, conventional swimming strategies simply won't work. Side-to-side -side tail undulations that propel fish would be completely ineffective at microscopic scales. Instead, microorganisms have evolved specialized structures and movements perfectly adapted to their viscous reality. Tiny hair-like cilia beat in coordinated wave-like patterns. This metachronal rhythm, where each cilium moves slightly out of phase with its neighbors, creates flowing waves that efficiently move the sticky fluid. Some microorganisms use helical flagella that rotate like corkscrews. This spiral motion is incredibly efficient at generating movement when viscosity dominates. These adaptations aren't just for swimming. They serve multiple functions, including creating currents that attract food particles. What's remarkable is the efficiency of these adaptations. Studies have shown that microorganisms have evolved to move through their viscous environment with minimal energy expenditure. This efficiency allows them to sense chemical signals in their surroundings, detecting food, predators, 
and optimal living conditions with remarkable precision. During times of resource scarcity, their energy-efficient movement means they can continue essential activities even when nutrients are limited. And these same adaptations enable them to travel relatively long distances to colonize new habitats. But here is the catch. These strategies only work in a low Reynolds number environment. If we tried to use tiny cilia to swim at human scales, they'd be hopelessly inefficient. And conversely, if microorganisms tried to swim like humans, they'd get nowhere. What's really fascinating is to see how organisms can adapt multiple times throughout a single life cycle. Snails are a perfect example of how the Reynolds number changes throughout an organism's life. These snails experience three distinct fluid dynamics environments as they develop. Inside the egg, embryonic snails live in a special fluid called paravitaline fluid. This fluid has a viscosity two to five times higher than regular water, creating an even lower Reynolds number environment than the surrounding water. In this extra-thick fluid, the tiny embryo can use microscopic cilia to create rotation. This spinning motion isn't just fascinating to watch, it's essential for proper development. The rotation helps distribute oxygen and nutrients throughout the developing embryo and plays a crucial role in the formation of internal organs and body symmetry. Without this spinning motion, these embryos wouldn't develop correctly. But once the snail hatches, it enters a new phase of life as a veliger larva. These larvae have more numerous and faster beating cilia than the embryo, allowing them to swim freely through water. This mobility is crucial. It lets them disperse to new habitats, avoid predators, and actively search for food sources rich in algae and microorganisms. The veliger experiences a higher Reynolds number than the embryo for two key reasons. First, it's now in water rather than the highly viscous paravitaline fluid. And second, the veliger has grown slightly larger in size. Both of these changes contribute to increasing its Reynolds number. As the snail continues to grow into an adult, its Reynolds number increases simply because of its larger size. The adult snail can no longer rely on cilia for movement, but instead uses muscular contractions of its foot to crawl along surfaces. Despite living in the same water as its larval form, the physics the adult experiences is completely different. This transition from embryo spinning in highly viscous fluid to veliger larva swimming with cilia to adult snail crawling with muscles beautifully illustrates how one organism must adapt to changing fluid dynamics as it grows. The snail's life cycle gives us a window into how evolution has created different solutions for movement as the Reynolds number changes, all within a single species. We've seen how the physics of fluids changes dramatically across different scales, from the microscopic world where water behaves like honey, to our human-scale environment dominated by inertia and turbulence, to the fascinating transitions a single species experiences throughout its life cycle. The Reynolds number gives us a window into these different worlds. It helps explain why microorganisms create such impressive, organized vortices relative to their size, while Olympic swimmers generate more chaotic patterns. This isn't just fascinating science. Understanding these principles has applications in engineering, medicine, and environmental science. Microfluidic devices used in medical diagnostics operate in low Reynolds environments similar to what microorganisms experience. Scientists studying climate change need to understand how microscopic plankton move through and affect our oceans. So the next time you're swimming, remember that you're experiencing a completely different physical reality than the microorganisms sharing that same water with you. To them, it's like moving through honey, a world where viscosity rules and specialized adaptations are essential for survival. The hidden physics of fluid dynamics shapes life at every scale, reminding us that even in the same water, we live in entirely different worlds. 
Thanks for joining us on today's look inside the microcosmos. We hope you'll consider subscribing to our channel so you won't miss our next adventure.